They're a pond turtle, but they live on the land. They eat dead things and poisonous mushrooms. Today, we're on the trail of the box turtle. Box turtles themselves are actually in the pond turtle family. Now that might seem kind of surprising because people think of box turtles as being terrestrial. They're land turtles, and that is true. However, studies have been done that have shown that when flooding occurs, that the box turtles actually don't leave their environment. They actually stay put. They actually stay in the water. They'll scramble, come up some vegetation, get to the surface, take a breath and sink back down and then go about their little turtle business. Now, what makes them different, however, from normal, uh, from normal uh, pond turtles is that with a pond turtle, uh, the plastron, the lower shell right here, this is, this is inflexible. This doesn't move. Uh, that stays fairly rigid. Where with the box turtle, the plastron right here actually has a hinge right there in the middle. And that allows this box turtle to be able to open and close the, the plastron, open and close the shell. So if we take this box turtle, this box turtle shell right here, you can see that that fits in just like that. And this one fits in just like, if I can do it, I'm not as good at this as a box turtle is. Come on, get in there. That one goes like that. And this one sits in just like this. And voila, the turtle's shell is closed. Now, one of the best ways to find box turtles is called road cruising. There, box turtle. Box turtles are known for hanging out near roads, especially early in the morning. They like to hang out in these roads, come out in these sunny patches, get sun. You've got to watch for them, especially in low-lying areas, uh, like in between valleys and things like that, where there's more water. That's where you're going to find them, early in the morning, crawling out onto the roads. Uh, the roads are fairly cool at this point, but the sunlight's hitting them. They're going to warm up really fast, and that's what they're looking for. Try to get them back over to the side of the road if you can. That way they're safe from vehicles. If they're trying to cross the road, you got to take them all the way across because turtles are very single-minded. They're very stubborn. If they want to go that way, then you got to, if you're going to rescue them, you got to put them that way. Realize there's vehicles on these roads. You got to be careful. You've got to be safe. Safety for the turtle, but safety for you as well. All right, stay, stay. You're already coming out. You're not staying. That's ah, there you go. Go that way. That's good. That's good. Good turtle. Now another interesting feature about turtles is that their shell itself is bone covered with skin, kind of like your skull is. Thick layer of bone covered with skin. Just like you can feel when someone touches your head, turtles can feel when you touch their shell. They're that sensitive. You can see that on this turtle right here. These are the scales that literally cover the bone that's underneath. So that's the scale and that's the bone. So amazing animals. They're not tanks. They're actually very sensitive. Like I'm hiking up and uh pause for a moment, scanning the area around me, you know, checking things out, and I see a little movement of a thing of grass, and lo and behold, I see this little guy right here, and he's actually here feeding, it's a eastern box turtle, male eastern box turtle, and I will, here, let me show you to you first. So, 
Here's a male Eastern box turtle. And you can tell he's a male. He's not gonna come out now. He's all shy. Look at him in there. He's so cute. So he actually has red eyes. That's one of the ways you can tell the male. The other way is see how this, the back part of this, uh, his carapace right here is flanged out. It's flared out. Females typically don't have that. And then if you tip them underneath, this bottom part of his plastron right there is concave. It's curved inward. That allows during mating season, if this were the female box turtle, if his, if his plastron were flat, then he would try to mount up for mating and he'd like slide off. And it would be, but that concavity right there, that little indentation, allows him to kind of nestle in and be able to maintain his balance. So that's really pretty cool. So this is a male eastern box turtle. Uh, now normally these guys are eating funguses and earthworms and things like that, but when they can, a little known fact, is that they will actually scavenge roadkill. They will scavenge dead things. Well, that was the other thing. Was that I found this sitting right next to him. And that is a dead um, gray rat snake. That's a dead gray rat snake. Um, I don't know if someone up here decided, hey, that's a snake and they got to kill it. Uh, no, no, these are rat snakes. Rat snakes are good. They're going to eat rats, mice, things that will spread disease. Anyway, this guy was over here and he was literally munching on it. He was getting a little snack. You don't often think of, of a little turtle like that as being something that would scavenge dead stuff, but indeed that's what's going on. So there's our little rat snake. I'm going to put him back. And here's our little box turtle. I'm going to put him back and I'm going to leave them alone and I'm gonna let him have his snack. So what happens if you have this big fused rib cage? What happens if you get flipped upside down? So a raccoon comes along and tries to munch you and starts knocking you around a bit. Well, you lay there for a while and you slowly peek your head out, look around, make sure that everything's okay, make sure that the coast is clear, that the raccoon is gone. And then once that happens, you then take your neck, you bend it out, you uh, flip yourself right back over. They're amazingly dexterous. They're amazingly strong, especially in their neck. So getting flipped over is not necessarily the death of a turtle. In some instances, it can be, especially if there's too much sunlight. But these guys, they're pretty good at getting back on their feet. Another issue you have to overcome if you have a fused rib cage is how do you breathe? You see, as mammals, we have a diaphragm, and as our diaphragm contracts, our lungs fill with air, that way we can get the oxygen, and our ribs can expand to allow for that increase in size in our lungs. Well, if you have a fused rib cage, your ribs aren't expanding at all. So turtles don't have diaphragms. They can't use them. So instead, if you notice, this turtle is pumping his throat in and out. This is called a guler pump. And he's doing that, his throat's acting like a bellows to move air in and out of his lungs to compensate for not having a diaphragm because he doesn't have flexible ribs. Some crocodilians do this, even some birds. It's a really cool way to overcome this problem. So if you're a really, really slow moving animal, you have to have different kinds of defenses in order to protect yourself from predation. For these guys, one of their main defenses is their, not only their camouflage, because their carapace, their top shell, looks like sunlight that's spilling through leaves and landing on the, uh, on the forest floor. It's kind of that dappled appearance but they also love to bury themselves down under things. So they will literally just dig in, go under piles of sticks and piles of leaves, and they will even down, even into the mud, they will just burrow themselves down and that helps them to remain invisible. But even on the surface, they're still pretty much hard to see. You've got to really look careful to find them. I hope you guys find box turtles just as fascinating as I do. They are such amazing animals. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share.